book page 11. Now, caveat before we even do today's where it's might be on the interval or not. If I gave you a reference angle and I gave you if the trig ratio was positive or negative, could you give me the angles? Let's, what does that mean? So if I say the reference angle, awesome, that's an eraser. If I say the reference angle, this is just a side note to lead you into today. If I say the reference angle is 30 degrees, and I say tan theta has to be greater than zero, could you tell me what angles fall between 360 that meet this criteria? Where do the reference angles sit? What is the definition of a reference angle? Yeah, so it's the little, little angle that goes from the terminal arm to the x-axis. We agree? So it's those bow tie angles. It's those ones that meet with the x-axis. So if I know I have a reference angle of 30 and I know I need to be where tan is greater than zero, could I find my angle? Yeah? Okay. Using cast, where is tan greater than zero? Quadrant one and quadrant three. And the reference angles are the little angles that go between the terminating arm and the x-axis, right? So I could actually draw the arms correctly. I have a reference angle of 30. So this would be my one. Because that's about 30 degrees here, right? I like how it just shifted marker colors for me on its own. Like I didn't even move things. It keeps reading my mind at this point. And then this one I'll actually turn. This one is also where it would terminate because it's positive tan. And this would be my reference angle of 30. Is that true? Yeah. Can I, could you now tell me what the angles are? Yeah. 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 What's this angle? 30. 30. 30. Because every reference angle in quadrant one is equal to the angle. And then what is this angle? Wow. How'd you do that? <laughs> what do you do for mathematically to get the math? 180 plus 30. 180 plus 30. My mouth's not working, so I'm just going to stop talking. 210. So I would say theta equals 30 and 210. Right? So if someone just gave you a reference angle, and gave you a trig ratio inequality, like is this greater than this or less, you just told me you can find any answer. Do you agree? Cool. Okay, what about this one? So, we know sine has to be less than zero, so that's in quadrants what and what? Three and four, because sine in all of quadrant one and two where it's positive. At its pi over three, so that's actually 60, so it's like here, pi over three, and then here is pi over three. So, a lot of you can look on your unit circle and you'll say, okay, well, it's um, 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, which is true. But what if it wasn't like just a perfect pi? Well, what would we do? We would go pi. It takes a pi to get to this spot, right? And then plus pi over 3, correct? If I do pi plus pi over 3, I get 4 pi over 3. And then how would I algebraically get to this one? What is it here? 2 pi, and if I take 2 pi and I do what? Subtract the pi over 3, I would actually get that pi over 3. Right? And then if I needed quadrant 2, I would do pi minus it, and then quadrant 1, the reference angle is the angle. It's not really easy. Okay? All right. So let's go back to page 11. What if I give you cotan of root 3? Well, when I see that, I'm like, why can't it be a primary trig ratio? Why are you so mean? That's what I think immediately. So then I'm like, okay, can I make it be a primary trig ratio? So I'm not allowed to flip angles, but I am allowed to flip answers. Is this an answer? Yes. 
it's root 3 over 1. That is an answer. We agree? I can flip answers. I cannot flip angles to get my reciprocal trig identity. So this would be tan theta equals what? Yeah, 1 over root 3, or people are rationalizing it, and it's root 3 over 3. What reference angle gets us a root 3 over 3? It's either 30 or 60, yeah. We need one, we need the first one to be a half divided by root 3 over 2, right? We need our y to be a half. Where's our y a half at 30s or 60s? 30s. So, something you might want to help yourself out with, because it will come into play later, it will help you. If tan theta equals root 3 over 3, it's a 30 degree or pi over 6 reference angle. And then what would 60 be? If tan theta equals what? Root 3. It's a nicer one, isn't it? Then it's a 60 or pi over 3 reference angle. And it will always be that as a reference angle because reference angles are positive, correct? Yeah. Now it could be negative root 3, but then it would just land in a different quadrant, but it's still a reference angle. The reference angle still has to be positive as root 3. Okay? So I know that because this one has an answer of root 3 over 3, I know from that that it has a reference angle of what? Yeah, pi over 6. Okay? And then, we could say that that's 30 degrees if we would like, because we can work in degrees to convert to radians at the end, that's totally fine, right? If radians freak you out. Now, I told you in order to give me answers, you need two things. I need to give you a reference angle, and I need to give you a trig ratio greater than or less than zero, right? Well, they gave me a trig ratio. What was it? Cotan or tan. And what is the answer, positive or negative? It's positive. So not only do I have a reference angle at 30, I have to have tan theta greater than zero. Do you agree? Now we're just where we were before. We're just where we were sitting before. Okay? So where is tan positive? Quadrant 1 and 3, because it's all in T, correct? And I have 30 degree reference angle, so it's here and here. And if you want, we can work in, in degrees. Fine. We have 30 here, which makes it 30. And we have 30 here, which makes this one what? 210. We agree? Everyone's following along. I told you to always find 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi always, and then look at your domain and decide what the heck do I need to do to it. Okay? Well, my domain is between negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees. Is that true? Okay. So my number line has closed off at the end of this one, Oops. and an open dot actually on this one. Why is this one open? Can't be equal to 180. So if the answer was 180, I wouldn't use it, which it isn't. So it's okay. And then sitting in the middle here is a zero. Do we agree? And we test our coterminals, and we test our normals. So 30, 30 degrees falls here. That's good. Uh, 210 falls here. So that's out. Do we agree? Then we check our coterminals. What are the coterminals to 330? What's my coterminal? Subtract 360, right? What do I get? Negative 330. That falls like here. So is that good? No. Let me check this one. Subtract 330, 360 from it and I get negative 150. Does that fit? So what are my two solutions then? They are theta equals negative 150 and 30 degrees, which are lovely answers. Come out of your box when you're in super trouble. 
So what do our answers need to be in? Radians. So theta is going to equal negative 5 pi over 6. How do you convert again? Multiply by what? Pi over 180, right? Because we want to get why did I put a degree symbol? Anyone? You list? I'm like, I don't even know when I did it. I can't get it rid of it. Oh. And then this is five. Can we work completely in radians? Sure. Yeah, it's even better. Some of you are like, that makes me sense. Okay? So, that one was still on the unit circle though, right? Root 3 over 3 is still on the unit circle? What unit circle exact values, sorry? The exact values on the unit circle. So 30, 45, 60, 90. What if it's not? What if it's still on the unit circle? However, it's not 30, 45, 60, 90 reference angles. So let's look here. We have cos theta equals 0 0.876. That's not, a, that's not one of the numbers that's perfectly on my unit circle. It still is on my unit circle, but it's a degree that I don't know what it is. So what do I need? I need two things. I need a reference angle, and I need a trig ratio, right? Well, let's cover the trig ratio first. Cos theta has to be what? Positive or negative? Positive, because my answer is positive. So greater than zero. We agree? And now I need to get myself a reference angle. Where is my reference angle equal to my angle? What quadrant is my reference angle equal to my quadrant one, correct? Because everything's positive there, correct? So if I want a reference angle, I just take whatever my trig is here, cos theta equals this, and I do the inverse trig, because if I want to find an angle, I want to get an angle, correct? If I want to get an angle, anytime you want to get an angle, you have to cos neg 1 something. Do we not? Of course. Remember, when you do cos sine tan, you're getting an answer to a side, right? If you do second cos, second sine, second tan, you're getting an answer to an angle. Do we agree? Mm -hmm. So I want an answer to an angle. But I want it to be... Um, if it's good land in quadrant one, it's always the same. So I use the positive. So even if this had been negative 0 0.876, I will always use positive 0 0.876. Because reference angle in quadrant one will land where it's positive. So everyone, type that in. What mode do I need to be in? Degree. Degree. Because you don't have a radius. Because it's 0 to 360. Everyone's practicing because no one has anyone else doing their calculator stuff for them on their test. So we're going to like a little calculator person beside you. So theta equals 28.8364529 degrees. And I don't want to round ever until my last answer. So my final answer. Okay, so I carry everything. Now, I have a trig ratio and I have a reference angle. Can I find the answers then? Yeah. Yes. So I have terminating arms where? Post gradients that are greater than zero. Where do I have terminating arms? Where do I have terminating arms? Quadrants 4 and 1. And it's 28 point something, so I'm going to draw it like this. And this is 28.8364528923. And then this one here is same thing. Correct? Does it not land in the same spot yet? Could we write like 28.8? I wouldn't be saving my pencil lead on a test. Mm -hmm. Dot 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 doesn't mean carrying any calculation. That's something we do to be like, like, be lazy. lazy. Yeah, like dot 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 in mathematics doesn't mean keeps on and now you can see all the decimals, right? So if you so I always just keep everything because I don't want anyone ever being able to take off marks on me, and I'm like, no, thank you, not today. So 
so I carry it all, because you do not want to round. We've talked about this with bridges. If you round before your bridge is made, you're now short on all the little pieces. Someone drives over and their bridge crumbles. Like, right? Like, you don't, you don't round until the very last answer. I use bridges because it's devastating if you would actually round on a bridge, right? But you did round 28.8364528982. I'm not rounding because I'm holding it in my calculator. Technically, you would use cos, if you were building a bridge, I hope you're holding cosneg 1 0 0.876. Like, I hope you're holding that as the, the actual value you're carrying it through. Because you're right, what I'm writing isn't technically the whole decimal. Yeah. But we can only write what we have on our screen because we don't have more. But if you were someone who was actually building a bridge, I'm hoping you're holding cosneg 1 0 0.876 because then you're holding all of it. Or you have a calculator that holds decimals for you and you can keep carrying it through. Right? All right. So the answer in quadrant one is what? The same, right? So can I, do, can I round now that I'm writing an answer? Sure, that's the time when you're allowed to round is at the answer. So this one here, I would go 28.84 degrees. They'd have to tell us what to round to. I was round to two if it, no one tells me. How do I get this one? What, what math am I doing? 360 degrees. So if any reference angles in quadrant four, I do 360 minus. If any... Reference angles in quadrant three, I do 180 plus. If anything's in quadrant two, I do 180 minus, right? And quadrant one is just awesome because it's the answer. All right, so we do 360 minus 228.8369. degrees. So my answer is, I look up there, it's between 0 and 360, they fall, and it's theta. So theta equals 28.84 degrees and 331.16 degrees. Squeaky, squeaky. Okay? Then we're actually going to go to the next page. Past all of my random drawings. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to look at D for now. Why do you suppose I picked D? Could be in radians. What else do you think? It's negative. That's the biggest reason why I picked it. Because when you're finding a reference angle, you always have to take the positive. Okay, so I wanted to drill that home, and we only have X number of times. So this is why I picked this one. So, cosecant, love you, great, great, cool, 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 cosecant. I don't like cosecant, I want sign. Give me sign back. Am I allowed to flip angles? No, am I allowed to flip answers? Yes. Is negative 1.5557 an answer? Yes. What's every number over if it doesn't have a number? One. So instead of holding cosecant, I could do sine theta equals negative 1 over 1 decimal 5, 5, 5, 7. Do we agree? Yes. I need two things in order to get answers. What are the two things I need? I need a reference angle and a, a trig quadrant, right? So first off, sine theta has to be what? Negative, right? Because the great trig ratio is negative. And to get my reference angle, I do sine neg 1 of what, guys? Negative 1 divided by 1.5? 1. 1. It's positive. Because if I take the positive of it, it will land me in quadrant 1, which gets me a reference angle every time. Right? Because quadrant 1, the reference angle is equal to the angle. So I always take the positive so that I land in quadrant 1. If you take the negative, it's going to give you some negative angles. Okay? So... I'm going to do 1 divided by 1.5557. And I'm actually going to work in radians because it's going to give me a weird decimal in degrees, and I'm going to convert read weird decimal degrees. So I'm going to work in radians. All right. So I go to mode. I go to radians. And I go second, oops, I go second sine 1 divided by 1.5557. And my reference angle equals... 0 decimal six nine eight one four four five five two four. 
and to help myself out, I'm going to put rads behind it so that I remember that I did radians, right? That that's not a weird degree. Okay? Why would you not just do it in degree mode and get 40.0007363? You can do that. So now you're going to carry all your decimals all the way through forever. Find the answers with all the decimals through forever. And then convert with all those decimals to radians with all the decimals forever. And then round. So you can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't you have to carry all the decimals on your Yeah, but I'm just going to add it to 2 pi or subtract it from 2 pi or subtract it from pi, which is faster in my mind than it is to carry all those decimals to convert. But you can do whatever you want. Like I said, you can run your degree. Yeah. Uh, you said you weren't allowed to do like, the sign constants at first if you were in degree. You said if you sign, you just have to make sure that you're in degree. You just have to make sure what mode you're in. Yeah. So if you're doing radians, you have to be radians. If you're doing degree, you have to be degree. Yeah. So I know that this needs to be where sine is negative, and sine is negative here and here. And then this here is 0 0.69814455624. And you know if you're going to score from whatever, but on test, always write them all out. Because I'm like, you ain't taking any marks from me. I am not a rebel on this test. So, both of these are actually greater than pi, are they not? Both these answers are going to be greater than pi, are they not? Pi sits here. So like, that's where I'm allowed to go with help. So I know both these answers are going to get kicked out. What answers I find? But what could I do to find the correct one? I'm going to subtract 2 pi because 0 to negative pi is here, is it not? So those will fit. The coterminals, when you subtract 2 pi, will fit. Okay, so how do I find this one? This one right here. What would I do? 2 pi minus 0 0.69814. And I get 5.8, How do I know it's too big? What the heck is pi as a decimal, guys? 3.14. Is 5.5 a little bigger? Yeah, so I know it's kicking up. Wait, wouldn't you do, like, the number minus 2 pi not the other way around to try to get it negative? Or am I just... No, that would just have a luck to have lucked up, but no. And no, that wouldn't have lucked up either. It would give you one way up here. Um, this would, that would give you this angle here if you did that. You have to find the angle first and then subtract 2 pi from it. You can't just take it to subtract. Okay. It would get you here. It would get you quadrant 1, negative. Um, and then this one I have to go pl pi plus, right? This is when the expensive calculators are way better. Because you just, it holds, you just steal the decimal. Now these are both too big. They're both bigger than 3.14, correct? So what do I have to do? Subtract 2 pi. Well, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, but you can't do it initially, right? Yeah. <coughs> It'd be rounded to two decimal places. It'd be negative 0 0.70. Could you guys just visualize it and know that this would be negative 0 0.70, like going use that reference angle and go negative? Absolutely, because it would end up in the same spot, right? And then this one here, we go steal this and subtract two pi. Well, if the reference angle is 0 0.69 and you have to go this way, that's negative 0 0.69, blah, 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 is it not? I just have to go this direction, that's what comes out at 0 0.69. There will be some of you who are like, left, cool, I like that we can do this in radians. I'm going to hold every single horrific decimal in, in degrees, and I'm going to roll with it, and then I'm going to keep every single one of those horrific ones, and I'm going to convert it to radians at the end. As long as you get the same answers as me, do not care. I was too lazy, and I didn't want, I don't have enough space to do all of that. Would you keep like subtracting that thing? It was negative two pi 
More than that, like yeah. negative four five, you subtract again. Yeah. Okay. We have a few seconds. This is a solving question, is it not? Did I tell you you can always check solving in your calculator? So you could plug those back in and you'd see if you have the same answer. But you can also do this. This is a good checking mechanism. But if I ask algebraically and you do this, you're pooch. So do not stand at this being your way. So this can be your y1. And this can be your y2 in your calculator. So open up your calculator, type that in y1, y2. How do I take cosecant theta into my calculator? <coughs> 1 over sine. If you don't know how to type them in, remember your formula sheet tells you exactly how to type them in. So in your y1, you have 1 divided by sine theta. In your y2, you have negative 1.5557. Correct? y1, y2. Now, you need to change your window to fit the window. And also, what mode do we need to be in? Yeah, they say that it just fixes itself. Oh, that didn't just fix itself. That was... Cool. Good, good talk. Okay, it's not letting me do it. It says it just reads... That told me last year, and it just did, but this time it did not. It's not. All right. To contact the techie people to get Jake and Lincoln here in the line. So here, what we're going to do is we are going to y1, y2, right? And now you need to make your window, your x be negative pi and your y be pi. Because you need to limit it to what it is. So next, x negative pi, y is pi. You're going to type a negative pi for your x min and your x max is pi on your window. You're changing your window. If you look at the xt data end button, it's all the same thing. Like the x button, if there's below mode, there's an xt theta end. It means any variable can be represented by that button. Right? So we want to be 1 divided by sine of x. And then you have 1.557. 1. And press graph. Do you see a graph drawn? you see how there's two intersections? It should look like this. Do you have y equals 1 divided by sine x? Yeah. Sine x or sine theta? Do you, you input the actual yeah. Just an x. You're not putting an answer in, guys. You're putting in x. Sine x. Y is one divided by sine x. Just squiggly. Yeah, my thing's squiggly. It's supposed to be squiggly data. Oh, I put it as one eighty-nine. Okay, so we need to have one divided by sine x. If your calculator is in degree mode and you just made your window in radian mode, good luck, Godspeed. You're gonna have I don't even know what you have like the craziest screen ever. Look what you have. Because you have a degree mode screen and radians. So go to your mode. Make sure it is in radians. Follow all the steps I'm saying. Don't like be a rebel and do 180 and 180. Why are you doing that? So go to your window. First off, make sure your calculator is in radian mode because we are dealing with radians whether you hate them or not. I do not care. Okay? Then go, go to y equals and type in 1 divided by sine x. Not sine that, sine x. You're literally typing in what that is. Theta is the same as x. Just a variable. And then your y2, you have negative 1.5557. And you press graph. After you have went to your window and you made your x min be negative pi, not 180, you're in radian. You can't like flippy floppy between the two. And then your x max is pi because we are in radian. You can't pick radian mode and then make your window be in degrees. That will not work. And then we press graph, and you should get like a U down and a U up. Okay? Now, we have two places that it intersects. Let's find them, and they should be those answers. So. Because you're, every time you're solving, just so you know, you are inputting where those two things intersect. The left-hand side and the right-hand side intersect. You 
do the same thing as I have in the Now, some people can't find their little cursor. On the bottom, it'll tell you where your cursor is sitting. Like it says, mine says negative 0 0.99 and negative 1.57. So I know that I'm, like, that's where my cursor is. And then as I move it, it changes because that's where my cursor is. Enter, enter, enter. And I get negative 2.4. Oh, same answer, crazy next. Second trace, 5. And then I move over to the other one. Because some people try and just go second trace, 5, enter, 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 and never move it and think it's going to move on its own. Base calculator is good, but not that good. Okay? So, fun fact, I can't believe no one came to me with questions, because that scares me, I don't know how you did the answers. Um, number 12, you can now do, all of it. Oh, ha, 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 I did it to my other two classes. 11 and 12. Not zero.